Hey Pixels, in this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this really cool 3D typography scene using your own initials in Adobe Dimension. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you'll be first to know when a new video drops. I hope you did it. Now, let's jump right into this tutorial. First, we're going to create a new document that's a square. 1080 by 1080 pixels. Now that we have our document set up, we can start creating our scene. First, we're going to set up some walls for the scene. In the Starter Assets panel, we're going to select and add a plane. With the plane on the scene selected, we'll rotate it on its z-axis at a 90 degree angle. We'll also need to move the plane object to the ground field by selecting Move to Ground in the Actions panel. Now, we'll need to duplicate the wall by pressing Command or Control D on your keyboard and position the second wall so that it's perpendicular to the first wall. We have our wall set up for our scene. So far, so good. Now, let's add some more objects to the scene. First, let's grab a cube and place it against the left wall in our scene. We're going to resize our cube in the Properties panel using the following measurements. Now, we'll duplicate the cube, move it beside the first cube, and decrease its height 10 centimeters. Now, we'll duplicate the second cube and decrease its height to 4 centimeters. In the Basic Shapes panel, we're going to add the text object to our scene. Feel free to add your own initials. Since this is an ExoPixel tutorial, it's only right for me to use the initials EXO. I'm going to choose Oswald as my typeface. I'll rotate the object and position it near the center of the scene. Now that we have the main typography in the scene, let's have some fun with different abstract objects on the scene. First, I'm going to add a cylinder to the scene. I'll scale it down and position it so that it's on the left side of the scene beside the text. Now, I'm going to add a sphere on top of the cylinder and reposition it so that it's basically levitating above the cylinder.
Now, on the right hand side of the text object, I'm going to add three more spheres. It's really just a matter of playing around with the scale and positioning of the objects to see what looks good and what doesn't. Feel free to take notes of the object properties in the properties panel if you want to accurately replicate this design. That's all the objects we're going to place on the scene. Now it's the fun part, which is bringing these objects to life by adding various materials and color to all the objects in the scene. I already have a color palette that I'll be using for this scene. I'm going to apply different tints of red to all the objects in the scene. In the Starter Assets panel, we're going to filter the assets by selecting the Materials icon. I want to add this matte material to all the wall objects, so I'm going to double click the wall objects and then select the matte material to apply it. In the object properties panel, I can change its base color to a color in my palette. I'll repeat this process for all wall objects.
I also want to color the ground for this scene, so in the Scene Layers panel, I'm going to select the Environment layer, and then in the Properties panel, color the background accordingly. I'm going to select the cylinder by double clicking the object, adding the plastic material to the object, and coloring the object pink. Now I'll select the sphere above the cylinder and the sphere on the ground, Apply the plastic material and color both spheres white. I'll select the last two spheres and apply the silver glossy material to both objects. Finally, we're going to select the text object and apply the plastic material to the text. Now that we've added the material, we can give it some color. Now that we've added material and color to all the objects in the scene, we can play around with the environment lighting for our scene. I'm going to quickly turn on Render Preview so that I can quickly get a sneak peek of what our final scene will look like when we completely render the scene, without actually having to render our scene because rendering takes some time. Our scene looks so good, the lighting is nice, but I'll look for a brighter environment light for this scene. In the Starter Assets panel, I'm going to select the Lights filter. Under Environment Lights, I'm going to select Studio Light Arches C. You can already see the increase in brightness by adding this particular environment light. Now that the scene is complete, we can adjust the camera view for the scene using the Orbit, Pan, and Dolly tool found in the toolbar. When I find a camera view that I like, I'm going to bookmark the view by selecting the Camera Bookmark tool. I'll click the plus icon to bookmark a camera view so that I can return to that view as needed. For this scene, I'll play around with the scene camera and save a different view until I find the view or views that I like best. Now I'm happy with my camera view and the entire scene. The colors, lighting, everything looks fantastic. I'll switch from design mode to render mode. I can select the different camera views that I wish to render. I can edit my export file name and choose different render formats. In this case, I'll just render a PNG image for this scene so I can share it on social media. I can also choose where I want to save the render file. Now, I'll simply hit render to render my scene. Once the render is complete, I can share my work on social media, add it to my portfolio, sky's the limit. That's how you create this really cool 3D typography scene using your own initials in Adobe Dimension.
Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to ExoPixel for more great videos on design, code, and tech. I'll see you in the next video.